This is Jupiter Today for the 3rd of April, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. So today there's six Jupiter satellite events and three satellite mutual events. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day in quadrant two, heading west. Europa starts the day in quadrant four, heading east. Ganymede spends all day in Quadrant 4 heading east, and Callisto is over in Quadrant 3 heading west. This blue line is the line of sight to Earth, and this gray line is the line of sight to the Sun. At 2.31, Callisto goes through a perijove, and that's the closest it's going to be to Jupiter in this orbit. And that's 1,869,081.3 kilometers. And then at 4.05 UTC, EO begins its transit. At 5.10 UTC, the shadow of EO ingresses. By six hours UTC, EO is transiting and going to be moving into quadrant three, heading west. By 6.22, the transit of EO ends. And at 727 UTC, the shadow of EO egresses. From 1007 to 1012 UTC, EO eclipses Europa. So EO is on the Earth side of Jupiter, and Europa is on the far side of Jupiter. That's a pretty long shadow. It's a 5.1 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.082 arc seconds. So that's a very deep eclipse, one that should be photometrically measured and seeing what's going on with that. The estimated magnitude flux drop was 0.626 magnitudes, and the only unfortunate thing is that they're relatively close to Jupiter, 14.38 arc seconds, and they're 47.27 arc seconds apart. At 11.15 UTC, Europa moves behind Jupiter, and by 12 hours UTC, EO, uh, Europa is still moving behind Jupiter, going to be going into quadrant one, heading east. The line of intersection here between the Earth line of sight and Europa's path is actually the midpoint of the time that Europa will be moving behind Jupiter as seen from Earth. The times are slightly different from what I give because Jupiter has a diameter which is actually approximately that size so that when we actually see Europa moving behind Jupiter it's over here. Okay, and by 1620 UTC, Europa reappears from Jupiter's shadow. From 1731 to 1755, EO occults Ganymede, and this is the first time of two that these occultations will happen between these two moons today. This first one's a 24.1 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.502 arc seconds and an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.187 magnitudes. And it's a nice distance away from Jupiter 2, 94.47 arc seconds. By 18 hours UTC, EO is now past its western elongation and is firmly in quadrant four, heading east. And Europa is now in quadrant one, also heading east. At 1850 UTC, EO goes through an apogee, that's the furthest it's going to be from Jupiter in this orbit, and that's 423,556.9 kilometers. And then at 2025 UTC, Ganymede goes through an apogee, and that's also the furthest distance it is from Jupiter in this orbit, and that's 1,072,927.2 kilometers. And then from 2241 to 2312, EO again occults Ganymede, 
It's a 27.9 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.575 arc seconds and an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.148 magnitudes. And closer to Jupiter than that last occultation, 37.63 arc seconds. And then by zero hours UTC, EO is still in quadrant four, heading east. Europa continues in quadrant one, heading east. Ganymede is in quadrant four, also heading east, going to be moving behind Jupiter pretty soon. And Callisto continues its orbit around Jupiter in quadrant three, heading west. Orbital ribbons for today. These are the temporal and spatial connections between the four Galilean moons. Here's Io and Europa and Ganymede and Callisto again with Jupiter in the center. And these are just the connections between those moons over the course of the next 24 hours. So here's Io and Europa, Io Ganymede, Io Callisto, nice almost symmetric ribbon there again. Europa Ganymede, Europa Callisto, and finally Ganymede Callisto. And then I combine all of these and colorize them a little bit, get rid of the orbital lines to get that for today. And that's pretty nice. 24 hours of Jupiter sky. See what's happening out at Jupiter from a different point of view, from Jupiter's point of view. And over the course of 24 hours, Jupiter rotates a couple of times. There's Io passing between the Sun and Jupiter to cast its shadow on Jupiter from Earth's point of view. there it's passing in front of Callisto. Hopefully someday some human eyes will actually be able to witness these events instead of having to simulate them. There went Europa into Jupiter's shadow, which we don't see, but we do see it reappear from behind Jupiter's shadow as it just did. Towards the end of the day, Io looks like he's going to be passing in front of Ganymede. The red spot crosses Jupiter's meridian twice today, the first at 8.38 and the second at 18.34 UTC. There were some new images posted. There was no new radio data and no new papers. So at zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on Earth's celestial sphere is a right ascension of nine hours, zero minutes, 41.4 seconds, and a declination of positive 17 degrees, 59 minutes, 51.2 seconds. The angular separation between Jupiter and the Sun, as seen from Earth, is 119.717 degrees, and that's 1.005 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The phase angle today is 9.341 degrees, and that's 0.098 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. 
The distance between Earth and Jupiter is 715,461,805 kilometers, and that's 2,068,216 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. Jupiter and the Earth appear to be moving away from one another, primarily due to Earth's motion around the Sun. And the radial velocity between Jupiter and the Earth is 86,175.67 kilometers per hour. The distance between Jupiter and the Sun today is 800,181,669 kilometers, and that's 43,793 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. And that gives a radial velocity between Jupiter and the Sun of 1,824.71 kilometers per hour. The central meridian at zero hours UTC, CM1, 191.37 degrees, CM2, 144.91 degrees, CM3, 68.14 degrees. So please hit that subscribe button and the like button and let everybody that you know be aware of this daily podcast focusing attention on the very dynamic Jupiter system like to encourage as many observations as possible both photographic and photometric they both have very huge value so you can send those and your comments and questions and images to the email shown and until tomorrow I bid you peace